Hello. Hello. Welcome, Welcome to my tutorial, tutorial on, how on how to make traffic, traffic lights for a garden railroad. railroad. I'm, I'm Dr. Dr. Tinkerer. This, this tutorial covers only the electronic and programming aspects, aspects of the subject. Of the subject. Each, Each garden, garden railroader, railroader should design and build his own traffic, traffic lights. lights. Here's, Here's a photo of my traffic lights set on a roadway. The roadway is scaled down. The actual roadway is larger on the railroad. There are four traffic signals, one at each corner. First, let's take a look at the electronic schematic of the circuit I designed. The circuit shown in the green dotted outline is the controller circuit. Two of these circuits are required. I use two Pickaxe 08M microcontrollers, one for the east-west traffic direction and one for the north-south traffic direction. Pickaxe 08M microcontrollers are very inexpensive and versatile. Both circuits are identical and each sends an interrupt on out O pin 7 to in 3 pin 4 of the other microcontroller. You'll see why this is necessary a little later. The circuit shown in the red dotted outline is the power source. This provides power for both controller circuits and the 12 LEDs in the traffic lights. The upper left portion of the schematic shows the pinouts of transistors, diodes, and voltage regulators for your convenience. Now let's look at the assembled circuit. This is the finished traffic light circuit board. I wire wrapped all connections for fast, easy construction. Wire wrapping also allows for easy circuit modification. Both controller circuits are assembled on the board shown. Two pickaxe microcontrollers are mounted side by side in a single 16 pin dip socket. The six transistors are mounted side by side in an 18 pin dip socket. This saves a lot of space. The LED resistors and 7805 voltage regulator are mounted on the left half of the circuit board. The bundle of wires on the left are the outputs to the LEDs. They terminate on a terminal strip allowing the circuit board to be located away from the traffic lights. Before we discuss programming the pickaxe microcontrollers, it's important to understand the pin assignments of the pickaxe chip. The pickaxe pin assignments can be confusing to beginners. In this picture, the hardware pins are designated 1 through 8 inside the block. The designations outside the block refer to the software ports. As an example, look at hardware pin 6. Its software port is IN1, OUT1, or ADC1. That means hardware pin 6 can be programmed as an input, output, or ADC port. Whenever the program refers to pin, low, high, input, output, or other instructions when pin is required as part of the instruction, it refers to the software port. As an example, the instruction output 4 means set software port 4 as an output. Software port 4 is hardware pin 3. This is important information when wiring the circuit board. Each controller has its own program, one for the master controller and one for the slave controller. Let's look at the master program first. As you can see, this is a very simple program. The text in red is programmer's notes and have no effect on the program other than to remind the programmer what he's doing. There are three sections to this program. The first section at the top is the programmer's notes. The second section is the symbols and variables section. This is where the programmer assigns symbols and variables to simplify the program. They are part of the program. The third section is the functions. This is where the main body and subroutines of the program reside. Now let's break the program down and analyze it. This is my introductory heading. It lists the program name, programmer, and any copyright information. It shows that this program will be used by chip 1 of the circuit. Pin 1 will be assigned to the red LED. Pin 2 will be assigned to the green LED. These are programmer's notes and are not required for the program to work. 
The symbols and variables section is where the programmer actually assigns symbols and variables as needed. Remember, in the notes section, I noted that I would use program pin 1 for the red LED. This is where I assign the symbol red equal to 1. This allows me to refer to the LED color rather than having to remember which LED is assigned to which program pin. The green and yellow LEDs are assigned in the same manner. Two more symbols are used. They represent the program delays used for timing the lights. The symbol long represents the red and green LEDs on time and is assigned to variable W1. The yellow LED is assigned the same way as shown. The last two lines set W1 and W2 to the values desired. W1 is set to 30,000 milliseconds, which equals 30 seconds. W2 is set to 5,000 milliseconds, or 5 seconds. The program uses long and short to reference these values. If I need to change them, I only need to change them in the symbols and variables section. Now we get to the main program. Here you'll see two functions, main and delay. The program starts at main. Let's follow each instruction now. Pause 1000 pauses the controller for 1000 milliseconds. Low, red, yellow turns off red and yellow LEDs. Remember, red and yellow are symbols for the software ports 1 and 4. High green turns on the green LED. Pause long pauses the controller. Remember, long is a symbol for 30,000 milliseconds. Toggle, green, yellow toggles the green and yellow LEDs. A toggle is a software switch. If green is on, toggling it turns it off and vice versa. As shown above, green was on and yellow was off. Toggling these turns green off and yellow on. Pause short pauses for five seconds. The time the yellow is on. Toggle, yellow, red turns yellow off and red on. High interrupt sends an interrupt signal to the other controller. Remember, interrupt was assigned in the symbol section and refers to software port O, which is hardware pin 7. Pause 2 keeps the interrupt on for 2 milliseconds. Low interrupt removes the interrupt signal. If pin 3 equals 0, then delay. After sending the interrupt to the controller, this controller waits for an interrupt from it. Go to main. When the interrupt is received, jump back to main and repeat it. Let's look at the slave program for the other controller. The slave program is laid out in the same order as the master program. In fact, they function the same except for one small detail. The program section shown in the box was added to the slave program so the lights would initialize properly. Let's look at this added program section now. For the traffic lights to synchronize properly, they must initialize differently. For example, if the master controller has a green light, the slave controller must have a red light. Since the master program sets its lights green, the slave program must set its lights red. This is accomplished by the init function of the slave program, which resides between the symbols and variables section and the main function. It's shown here in red. It sets the lights of the slave controller red, then jumps to the delay function and waits for an interrupt from the master controller. From there it works the same as the master controller, only 180 degrees out of phase. The init function is not used again until the controller is rebooted. Now let's see the traffic lights in action. The lights shown start out green in the master controller and red in the slave controller. The two lights facing away from the camera are connected to the master and slave controllers also. The master green light and the slave red light stay in that state for about 30 seconds. Then the master green changes to yellow for about 5 seconds. One second later the slave red turns green. 
The slave controller will now execute the same set of instructions the master controller just completed. I have set the timing of the traffic lights for my garden railroad. You can set them to a more realistic time by changing the values W1 and W2 in the symbols and variables section of the program. The values you choose must be in milliseconds. There are 1,000 milliseconds in a second. Then, the whole process repeats itself. I'm Dr. Tinkerer. Thank you for watching.